The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Our guest today, Jackie Knight, is the Artistic Director for the Youth Performance Company. She'll be discussing the company's 1995 season and also talking about how Youth Performance Company works with young people in the Twin Cities to cultivate an interest and expertise in the theater and performing arts. Jackie, it's a pleasure to have you here today to talk about the exciting 1995 season of the Youth Performance Company and to give us a little background on how you're actually involving children in the community in theatrical productions. How did the company start? Um, the company began in uh, 1989, in June of 1989, and um, at that time myself and another woman named Laura Rudy wanted to start um, a company in um, Minneapolis for young people, and we didn't have any money. <laughs> and so we decided, um, well, you know, we're creative people, there must be a way that, that we can, can do this. And what we did was we put together a number of different proposals that we shopped around to different organizations, either to kind of barter our time to get the space or um, giving um, different organizations a certain percentage of the money that we'd bring in. Um, we found our best match with Theater in the Round. Um, which is the oldest community theater in the Twin Cities. They were really looking to be able to offer um, additional programming to young people. And so they really helped us uh, create the organization as far as giving us that opportunity. And um, when we first started, you know, believe it or not, starting a theater company is kind of like having a baby. You don't know exactly, you know, what the personality is going to be. And um, almost immediately, once the, the company was organized and we began, we drew uh, older, older young people. Um, our, our programs are available for young people between the ages of 8 and 21, but we happen to draw very heavily in the 15 to 21 age group. Well, that's just the age group that, that everyone is saying needs something to do, something to keep them occupied, give them alternatives to sports, uh, something that develops their creativity. The, the Twin City area is pretty rich in theater and there are some larger companies that do involve young people. Wh why did you think that this smaller kind of a uh, focus was necessary? Well, um, we were hoping that uh, it's kind of like we were, we made discoveries along the way. Um, there are hun well hundreds of, of organizations, theaters in particular, that are for adults. And at the time that we started, there were just like three or four for young people. So we felt that certainly, you know, there was a lot of room, and certainly not all young people were being served. I think the key for us is once we realized that we were attracting teens, that really made us, you know, kind of think about the structure that we wanted to have in the company and how did we want to gear this company to keep their interest. You know, that was a, a real key factor. Um, when you start a company such as ours, you're not going to receive immediate funding. And so you're very much uh, dependent on ticket sales as, as you know, the, the, that's where the majority of our revenue was brought in. So because of that, we certainly had to do uh, shows that were very well known that the community uh, would want to come in and see. And, and we really, you know, our first like three years, we, we stuck very much to kind of classic children's literature 
um, and theater. Um, a lot of shows like Tom Sawyer, Snow White, Cinderella. Very, you know, the shows very, that parents and grandparents recognize, whether they've read the book or exactly, not. Exactly, yeah. absolutely. And and so because we were going to be doing those stories, and some of them certainly speak to to older kids, but a lot of them, you know, are geared for younger audiences. What we decided to do was we decided that we would take a look at these stories and see if we couldn't structure them in ways that would be really interesting for older kids to want to perform in them. Um, and so that, that became part of the objective. Um, for example, uh, we did King Arthur a couple of years ago and um, it was set in the future. It was set um, in an urban playground. The knights were on rollerblades and skateboards. Um, it was, you know, very contemporary, and um, our young audiences loved it. You know, because it was so exciting for them to watch all of the visuals. But it was great. Also, uh, we took a piece of classic literature that sometimes for young people can be very difficult to get through, and and made it come alive and and, and very current. And and we've done that. Not we don't do that with every single story, but. We we really try to take a look at the literature that we were doing and think, you know, how how can we show this in a different perspective? Because you know how great it is. Um, a, a story can be interpreted in so many different ways. And I think sometimes we get very accustomed to seeing it in just one way. And, and it's so, very rigid, and that's what makes literature and theater boring in the minds of, of many young people as well as adults. Absolutely. And so it, it was just for us to, to take a look at that and see, you know, different ways that we could approach different pieces of literature. Well, you've involved children and young people as actors, but they also have different roles in the company too, don't they? And uh -huh. in terms of set design and sometimes a little production experience. Oh, absolutely. Um, again, once we recognized that we were going to draw, you know, uh, teens, we wanted to come up with things that would continue their commitment. And they have such amazing abilities and such amazing talent. And so we decided, let's take advantage of this. Let's give them opportunities that they really can't get at other places. So uh, with that, we've set up a very strong mentorship program within the company where when we identify young people that have been involved with the company that might have a particular talent that's, that's really exceptional, we'll first of all try to you know, partner them up with an adult artist so that they learn, um, hopefully, uh, the, things that the, the tools that they might need to carry that craft further. And then, you know, if, if they progress where they need to be, we, we give them the opportunity to take the leadership role in that. We have had, like currently right now, we um, have a show up for the holiday season, um, which is called The Night Before Christmas, and that was written by a 17-year-old that has been involved with our company. Um, and we have done that on many occasions where we have taken young people who had a great talent in writing and given them that opportunity. In addition, we've had musicians that have composed music for us. We've had young people come in as choreographers, um, work on sets and costumes, and the whole shebang. You know. So. Well, it's exciting. Where do you where do you recruit or audition these kids? Are they students who have worked in school productions, or are some of them just? kind of kids who are interested in develop we, these hidden talents. You know, we have kids from all over and in, in all different kinds of backgrounds. We try to post, uh, for example, audition notices in, in principal papers uh, in the metropolitan area. And so that's, you know, the, the best way for a company our size, which has a very limited budget, you know, to get the word out. And also I think that young people that are involved with the company, you know, certainly tell their friends and they tell their friends. We draw from all over the metropolitan metropolitan area, including Wisconsin, believe it or not, where we've had young people drive in and, and participate in the company. So even, even young people who don't have a professional experience by starting kind of in an apprenticeship role can, can find themselves Oh, so being yeah, a real strong absolutely. We, we've had uh, people that have extensive backgrounds, and then we have had young people where this might be their first experience. Um, they've maybe come and seen a show or heard about us, and they think, gosh, I want to try that. 
or they know that they can get an opportunity to possibly have a play produced. You know, they have that writing ability. One, one, a really important component of our company um, is that we have a Young Artist Council, which is a leadership board um, comprised of the young artists. We have our, an adult board that governs the company, and then they have their board. And one of the things that they do, and this is where I think the strongest outreach comes uh, as far as bringing uh, other young people into the company, is that they produce their own show every year. And in doing that, they hold a playwriting contest. And so again, that is something that we send out to area high schools and junior highs, notices about the playwright contest. They staff the show completely with kids. And again, they do the same kind of mailing and put ads in the papers, letting people know that they're looking for directors and choreographers and everything. They have to raise the money for the show themselves. Um, so it's, it's an incredible learning experience for them because they have to follow it you know every single facet and they are responsible for every single facet of it and again with the adult mentors helping them along the way what are some of the fundraising techniques you've used well <laughs> door-to-door candy sales bake sales uh, what they like to do is uh, during the main stage season they usually will have some sort of item that they they don't sell them but they ask for donations um, like uh, currently for this particular show they're selling um, Christmas ornaments um, um, and candy. Candy is always a big, big Christmas, The holiday season yeah. of 1994. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So, you know, they, they come up with lots of different ideas as far as trying to pick some sort of item that will go with a show that we might be in current production. You know, they've sold swords for King Arthur. They've um, sold uh, buttons for different kinds of shows and things like that. What kind of reaction do you get from faculty and the schools where these these students are, are going to school, do they come back and say this has really made a difference in this kid's oh, life? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, and especially the parents, of course, um, have been tremendously supportive and amazed that their that their children, you know, can you know can do these kinds of things. But yes, we've had many different uh, teachers um, and lots of different youth organizations that have become involved, you know, with the company. Because as a as a result, whether it's just as an audience member or or support in some other way, um, I think that the schools that a lot of these young people you know uh, happen to go to are extremely supportive because it gives these kids yet another opportunity that maybe their school district cannot offer them. Well, is that is that one of the things you're finding that there aren't the opportunities for kids to get involved in? in creative dramatics or arts or, or regular drama in the schools now because of funding or whatever. Exactly. We, you know, we all, all of us that are in the nonprofit sector and, and, you know, really working to get funds know, you know, how difficult it is to get that money. And certainly because of that, a lot of, you know, incredible programs have been either cut very much, you know, back to the bare bone or um, they don't exist any, any longer. Um, I think the other thing is, uh, it's it's an opportunity for th these young people to receive professional training and to work with people that are currently working in the arts as professionals. And Which so, is different than a school setting. Exactly. And also they're, they're, they're working with kids that have the same interests. Like sometimes when you're at school, if you're involved in a program, whether it's athletics or the arts, you might be really, really serious. And maybe some of the other people are, but a large factor of those kids might be just doing it, you know, as, as an, as an ex extracurricular activity, almost entertainment. They may not have the seriousness about it as, as you do. The kids that we draw are very serious about, you know, what they're doing. I mean, they have a lot of fun, but they're very serious about their commitment to this, and they're really trying to use this time to explore to see is this something that I want you know as a lifelong goal is this a career that I would like to do um, and so I think it you know it brings together kids that have a very strong interest and I know for myself I'm from a small town and I remember when I was in high school we had a very limited drama program and if I could have been around other kids that shared the interests that I had in the way that I had it it would have been so great you know, and so I think that that's probably one of the greatest strengths. Because sometimes I think students who are involved in drama are seen as being a little exotic or not quite as as um, with it as the the kids who are the jacks or the exactly the sports. exactly. It's, to digress a little bit from youth performance, I I 
sense you have a real passion for how important drama and arts can be for young people, and yet programs are, are, are losing their funding. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens when young people don't have access, not only to watching performances, but to having the opportunity to participate in them? Well, you know, <clears throat> In this, in, in our world, we are constantly trying to problem solve. You know, we're trying to solve problems, and we have a history of many incredible people that that had the creativity and the imagination to solve lots and lots of problems that has you know that have helped us move forward in this world, and and that's you know I think that's one of my greatest fears is that. When we get rid of our culture, you know, besides the fact that it can help us learn about so many different things, um, we're, we're losing, you know, this opportunity to teach young people how to solve problems in a creative way. And that's, that is a scary thing for me. Well, I think you've, you've taken some risks with the company and in terms of solving problems and helping young people and, and your audiences look at things. Uh, in January of 1995, you're mounting a production called Freedom Riders, which is a civil rights story. And mm -hmm. that certainly is far beyond uh, The Night Before Christmas or Velveteen Rabbit, some of your other productions. Did the young people help you decide that this was a topic you wanted to tackle? Talk a little bit about that and how you're directing that. Yeah, that production. Yeah, I'd love to talk about it. Um, what happened once um, the company, you know, had a few years under its belt, we decided as a company we really needed to do at least one show in our season that showed um, young people uh, in, a, in a position where they helped create some sort of positive change, you know, um, in history, or, you know, in, in some way. And so, um, because we wanted uh, one story to reflect more closely to the constituencies that we serve. And so um, we decided that we would take the risk and maybe do something that would be original, uh, not a known story, because we felt it was so important to be the leader in, in doing this kind of thing. So last year was the first year that we did this. And we did a story called Incident at Little Rock, which was about the first um, high school in the United States that was federally mandated to integrate. It was an incredible story, um, an incredible experience for all of us that worked on the project. And I think what was so exciting was to tell the story of these nine young African-American students that were so brave. I mean, what, the things that they had to go through were just so incredible. And, and, and they did it, and through that action, history was changed. We feel that this is kind of the next story along that line. Um, uh, that took place in 1957, and now we're in 1964. And now we see black and white students coming together to continue that work in the civil rights movement. And this particular uh, show is focusing on the 1964 uh, Summer Freedom Project that took place in the state of Mississippi. And um, this project was about students from across the United States black and white students coming to the state of Mississippi to make a change. Um, it was an election year and they felt that if they could break the state of Mississippi, which um, in the eyes of many people was one of the most oppressed states in America, that it would break open the civil rights movement, and it did. And so we're very proud to, to try to, to tell this story um, in the best way that we can. And also, we think it's so important that people remember this happening. Well, for those of us who are young men, it, it seems like yesterday, but young people don't have that same. It could be as far back as King Arthur for many, exactly. many kids in our communities. What kind of a reaction did you have from students in the audience in, in 1994 who watched Incident at Little Rock? Did kids tie it to things that they're observing in society today or things that are going on in their own schools and, and wonder why there hasn't been more of a change? Well, you know, it's so interesting that you said that because when we were working on that project, um, uh, uh, there were headlines in the paper about the problem of segregation in the metropolitan school districts. 
today in 1994. So it was interesting how, you know, how timely the show became. Um, I think that we, we received uh, you know, such a strong response from the many schools that attended because um, unfortunately we have not gone that far. And I think that that's what people you know, realize day after day um, that there is a lot of racial discrimination that occurs. And this story kind of re-reminded all of us that we have many steps to go. That is, that is certainly something that is not done or is not finished. And I think it also, um, for students that had an opportunity to see the show, I don't think they had any idea of what these kids had to go through. Um, the humiliation, um, again, how brave they had to be and how remarkable it was that, that these 15 and 16 year old students were doing that and that they themselves, and that's, that's, that was one of our hopes, is that they themselves would take that back to their own schools and hopefully make changes you know, in, in, in how things were at their own high school or at their own elementary school. I'd expect it would have had a powerful impact and especially on the young actors who were playing those roles, possibly some of their parents. Yeah, what was really been. great is we had a couple of people from Little Rock that uh, saw the show. We, one of the, the teachers of the Little Rock Nine, it was, she was an elementary school teacher, came and saw the show. And then we had a classmate um, of uh, one of the students and the prom date of one of the students. And I mean, they were And wept. it was real. It was It was the way so it was. real, yeah. Well, one of the classmates spoke to the group after the, she saw the show, and we were all in tears afterwards because, I mean, to, I mean because, you know, it, it, yeah, it, it was a real story, and these were real people. And it really hit home, really hit home for those kids. Well, I think for all of us, seeing something dramatized makes it more real. It, we empathize with the characters in a way that we don't always do when you're hearing a straight news story or something. Um, some of the other more lighter programs that you're focusing on are productions in 1995. You're doing a Pecos Bill, which sounds like it would be lots of fun. And then that old library, <laughs> Chestnut, Velveteen <laughs> Rabbit. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. Yes, we're doing Velveteen Rabbit and that we kind of hail as our traditional story of the season. Um, it's going to be done. I'll give you a list of better ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, it's going to be done, you know, in a very traditional fashion and very sweet. And you know, it is it is a wonderful story. It really is. Yeah. Um, uh, it talks, uh, you know, a great deal about friendship and what does that mean and, and caring about someone. So that story is, um, as you said, occurring in February and March of 1995. And then we conclude our season with Pecos Bill and other tall tales. And in, in that particular show, we're focusing in on the tall tales of Paul Bunyan, Pecos Bill, and Annie Christmas. So um, it's going to be a very wild and wacky um, show. And we're, we're excited about doing it because I, I think that, I don't know of another company that's focused on American folklore. Um, or it doesn't seem that way because we've had a, we've had a tremendous ticket response uh, for that show. So. Well, Paul Bunyan, and we are in Minnesota. Well, I, the variety certainly not only gives your actors a chance to explore all kinds of roles, but again, the community to see that you're not, your mission is broader than just a social or a exactly. entertainment. You we, have a, you know, well, as you know, I mean, you work for the library, and that is the greatest treasure we have. And so we want to be able to do all different kinds of stories. That brings such a wonderful diversity to our company. Um, and so we're, we're constantly looking and searching, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you afterwards because I'm sure you can give me um, suggestions. But we like to do a really, you know, a broad scope and bring lots of literature to life on stage that young people read, you know, and, and bring it to life. the interesting thing I noticed is, is your ticket prices are affordable so you can bring people from the community who may not be able to afford some of the other opportunities. Well we like to think of ourselves as an accessible yeah. theater company. Um, well and accessible we haven't talked about where you are located. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh, well we perform at the Howard Kahn Fine Arts Center and that's located at 1900 Nicollet. Um, it's a theater complex that is within a, a, a church called the Plymouth Congregational Church. And, um, and they're involved in a lot of community activities. Yes, they do I lots think. of incredible, I mean, it's a, it is an incredible church because lots of things going on all the time there. And so, and then our office and rehearsal location is at 3338 University Avenue Southeast. Uh, we're a generously 
kitty corner to Channel 5 on University Avenue. So we're right, at, right between Minneapolis and St. Paul. Speaking of the rehearsals, how often do the students and the, the company have to um, Usually our rehearsal process is approximately six weeks. Um, the first four weeks we rehearse 4 to 6.30 usually, and then the last two weeks we move on site to where we perform, and then rehearsals are extended 4 to 8 the second to the last week and 4 to 9.30 the last week. So it's a really big commitment for a young person to be involved with the company. They have to... Um, really prioritize you know their responsibilities and, and and their life we don't want them to get behind in, in in schoolwork or other responsibilities that they might have to their family those kinds of things so that you know really exceptional kids are involved with the company because they have to juggle a lot and i think that's really one of our strongest guiding principles i would say as a company is that we really want to teach that uh, with every opportunity received, there is responsibility. And that's an important lesson in our company because, you know, we feel that a lot of people um, today are not taking responsibility either to their families or to their jobs or to their community. And whether or not these young people that we work with become actors or actresses tomorrow, we know that they're going to be in our communities working in some way. And we want to make sure that they're, they're being responsible and, and, and understanding what that means and all that goes with it. And that's certainly exactly what we are all hearing that the community needs to do with young people, to, to give them a chance to be responsible and then they they yeah. end up not disappointing us. It's it's amazing what you know. It, you know, it's, as an older person, I can remember. You know, gosh, <laughs> not that. <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> you know, now I think, why would you want that kind of responsibility? You're going to have it all your whole life. But kids really want that opportunity to show what they can do, to show what what they and can. And when they're share. doing something that they enjoy, and when they understand it's not busy work, or it, that exactly. it is meaningful, and then it yes. makes a difference. Yes. They want to know that they have some sort of impact, too. Well, Jackie, we're going to put the number for Children's Performance Company on our graphics at the end of the program so people can call for information about your current season. And perhaps there are some young actors and actresses out there who will be giving you a buzz to see if they can get involved. Well, I hope so. Thank you so, very much thanks. for being with us today. Yeah, thank you. The Youth Performance Company provides a wonderful opportunity for young people to become involved in the performing arts. Thank you, Jackie Knight, and thanks to all of you for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency. We thank you for watching and we hope you visit your public library often.